after listening to you, after working for some period with Luca, uh, I can tell you this. We work at a very different abstraction level. So don't be surprised if my, what I'm going to say will be at the abstraction level very different from what you are used to. Uh, uh, each one has its own... Uh, I have to choose to find the right... If I also find the slides? Ah, okay. Uh, Okay, so who I am, very briefly, as uh, I am the oldest speaker of the day, I believe the oldest speaker today, so that's important features. Uh, I work on the risk assessment, cyber risk assessment. In particular, my dream is to be able to give a quantitative evaluation of cyber risk for human architecture. Uh, when I created the startup, I proposed that the logo of the startup should be numbers, not words. So when you evaluate the risk, you give some number instead of giving a, a lot of words, but most of the time uh, are, not, are not very useful. So uh, we have developed a framework to evaluate the cyber risk. It is based upon digital twins, a notion that I have seen uh, in various speeches this morning. Let's say that something that has been described could be reframed in our framework of digital tweet. Uh, and I have coordinated several risk assessments of the industrial control system, uh, critical infrastructure, etc. So if you want, if you use, want to use a buzzword, uh, I have done some work in the Internet of Things world. So, cybersecurity, uh, three points which is the cyber current status, which are the current challenges, which will be the future uh, challenge. The current status, what is the current status? It's bad, thank you. Uh, this morning I was, to explain you why I believe you think it's bad, but this morning I was reading a book uh, uh, just to tell you the difference between uh, abstraction layer. Uh, the topic of the book is, uh, are cyber attack an act of espionage or, or war. Okay, but uh, let's forget about the answer. The, the nice point is that one sentence uh, was this one. Every intrusion is the same intrusion. That is, 19% of the intrusion is the same intrusion. Is an instance of the same event that repeats itself. I believe that 90% is optimistic. I think actually 99% of intrusion is the same intrusion. So, uh, I think people are repeating errors. Uh, well, the nice point is, it seems that we are becoming aware that we have a security problem. Uh, the bad news is that the same solution are in use. Uh, current, challenge, uh, current challenges, well, the Two most important challenges, in my opinion, are supply chain attacks. These are an important impact on open source software, as I will try to convince you later. And the second point is the ransomware. I believe these are the two most serious problems currently we have to face. Future challenges, well, very trivial. Artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence, Nowadays, you cannot sell anything if you don't say we are using artificial intelligence or we will use artificial intelligence even more. And then in 99% of the case, you discover that artificial intelligence is simply computing the average or the standard distribution uh, of, of some data. But we will see that. Oh, sorry. This is a, an old report, okay? This is... <laughs> Uh, okay, the current status. I like this quotation, even if it's not by Einstein, I am sorry to inform you, but even if it's not from Einstein, it's true. We scientists doing the same thing over and over and expecting different answers. This is what we are doing in security. 
We are repeating, well, most people are doing it securely. They repeat the same, they apply the same tool, the same technology, change the name of the technology, but do, does not change it, the uh, background, etc. And they hope for different results. Sorry to show you that there is this, this disagreement, but I see a word where capture the flag is not a way to spend some time with your friend and enjoy, is a way of improving cybersecurity. I've never seen a cybersecurity problem that has been improved by capture the flag or a penetration test. Sorry. Uh, so let's try to do something new. Uh, we need maybe something new. So uh, to show you, this, this, the problem, the security problem is very old. Uh, these are the number of uh, high risk vulnerability in the computer system, in the infrastructure. You see that, uh, as an example, at least any firms are at least 25% of access with highly secure vulnerability. And high risk vulnerability are there. So we are using systems that are full of vulnerability. Okay, this is a status of the art. We cannot do Anything. Okay, and this, the second bad problem is that you know that there are vulnerabilities with a strong simplification. You may see that there are vulnerabilities that are public and vulnerabilities that are zero day. So someone knows them, but they are not public. What you can do with a zero day, well, if you are a state, you can stack the zero day to be used later when you need it. Or if you are a researcher, you can sell the zero day to some company that will sell, etc. Or you can sell on the dark market, etc. Uh, in the past, zero day were usually sold to states. Now, cyber crime is so fruitful that cyber gang can buy zero day on the dark market in competition with states. And so we see a large number of attackers that are using zero day. Before zero day were, were more or less reserved for state-sponsored attack, currently they, they are used even by cyber gang, criminal gang, etc. And they take into account that zero day are not shown here. If you consider zero day, this curve will become higher. So do you see this, the increase use. Uh, other problem, other problem, there is this huge number of zero day. The real problem is that attacker in the attack, they use a small number of, of zero day. This was the. This is the reason why. The, uh, the reason why, as an example, in the state, they have created the list of knowing exploited vulnerability. That is, these are the vulnerabilities that are exploited. So, we have a huge number of vulnerability, a few, of some activity, very few, are actually used. The problem is, well, is this black, sorry, red area. So, uh, the contradiction, our system have a large number of vulnerability, a very few ones are exploited, so we could remediate them. No company can remediate all the vulnerability in this asset, but if you know the red area, maybe you can remediate that. The problem is, it's usually very difficult to know which in my systems are the red one, so the one I should try to remediate. Uh, you see, are very low, because it takes two years for that red area to include 1,000 vulnerabilities. 
if you consider all the area, we are about 50,000 in vulnerability. And I quite think it's zero there. So, uh, an important point when we discuss about security, an important point is not really vulnerability. The important point is exposure. Exposure is an asset of a company that can be reached by composing vulnerability, by composing the attack that exposes vulnerability. So this is the idea of the attack part. Usually our, our systems are so complex that you cannot reach an important resource with one attack. You need to chain several attacks, what is called an attack chain, a privilege escalation, it has several names, but the basic idea is the same one. So it is important for a company to know which are the exposure, that is, which are the resources that can be attacked, and which are the paths that an attacker can use to reach this exposure. This is the important notion to put our, to make our infrastructure secure. Exposure and that uh, So, there was a commercial of a company that works in this field that tells that the defender usually think in terms of vulnerability, while attacker think in terms of path. If we want to defend from attacker, also we, the target defender, uh, we should think in terms of attack path rather than of simple vulnerability. Well, and this is possible. This is possible. You, we can discover attack path. The real problem is that there is a huge number of attack path. My company, my company, the company I contributed to, to, to create, we have done an assessment, uh, an assessment for an industrial control system. An NDA forbids me from saying you that it was a ship, so I cannot tell you that. It was a ship, and we look for the other part in the driving system. I do not know the on that ship. And we found a number of attack paths using our technology, not here to describe our technology, using our technology. The point is that there were some thousands of attack paths. And only if you have this information, how many attack paths you have, you can remediate that. If you have just the information, just a few paths, you cannot remedy it from, uh, let's say, for some paradoxical reason. You can even make the situation worse if you work just on a few of them. So, uh, which is the problem? The Einstein quotation. You can find that number of times of other part by hand. It's not a problem of being clever. Uh, I am more, more clever than you. I have wo I have won a larger number of capture the flag exercises than you, etc. That is not a problem a human can solve. We need automatic tool to solve that problem. Then future challenge. Well, I was a bit uh, ashamed of choosing which are the most important future challenge. Uh, then I speak to some guy in our National Cybersecurity Authority, they agree, it was nice. Then the ENISA was so kind to publish this record a few weeks ago, so even they agree, so it's not me, there are other problems. But rather than the Okay, which is the most serious problem? Supply chain attack. A supply chain attack is an attack where the attacker targets not a company, 
but a supplier of that company, or if you prefer, a supplier of a supplier of a supplier. That depends on how long the chain is. Usually, this supplier may be a small enterprise, much less weak, not enough resources, etc. So maybe this attack will be successful. Then, when the module that has been attacked is delivered to customer, each customer can be attacked. As the supply chain becomes longer, the number of customer increase, the size of the supplier decrease, and this simplify the situation for the attack. This is the main difference. I do not know, but maybe some of you know. Uh, there are two directives of the European Union, NIS and NIS2. The goal of NIS was the protection of critical infrastructure. So the European Union states, rule, uh, principle, etc., uh, that should be satisfied by the one who manage a critical infrastructure. Then, after some time, they discovered that putting regulation only on the one that manages critical infrastructure is not enough because problem can be created by the supplier. So the idea is you have an ecosystem with critical infrastructure, supplier of the managers of the infrastructure, etc. Only by regulating the whole ecosystem you can hope to solve the problem. And this explains NIS2, which is the new directive that exactly takes this problem into account, but not solve it. Uh, this is a huge number of uh, supply chain attacks that have occurred. The most famous one, the most two famous are Kaseya and Solar Wind. Solar Wind is very nice because it's Solar Wind is a supplier of cybersecurity product. Product that should be used to defend the network. And they work for federal institutions, a huge number of companies in the United States. And they have been attacked. They claim that the guilty, as usual, the guilty was a, let's see, not very educated user whose password was SolarWind123. Uh, I never believed to this story. If you have a system that can be attacked because a user is so stupid to choose a password SolarWind123, well, the second problem is that your system is so weak. So usually, these users are a scapegoat to save someone else more important. Uh, and you see, here this is uh, all the supply chain attack that we are not aware of. It's not the supply chain attack or nothing new. In the sense, it's always been a tendency of attacker when they see a system that is protected, they move to something that is connected to the system but is less protected. First, they attack the directly server, then server become a bit, a bit more robust, then they attack clients, they move back, and now we are here. What you can do, well, uh, the Biden administration has issued a regulation that requires that when you create a system, you have to preserve a software bill of materials. Software bill of material is essentially an inventory of not your software, but the software you have used to build yours. And this is recursive, so if one supplier has given a module to you, it needs a software bill of material that tells you which are the library, etc., in that module, and so on. This is uh, Let's say this is, was this was a result of the uh, log4j problem. 
where most of the users that were affected by this vulnerability were not aware that they were using that library. So they had the vulnerability, but they did not aware that they, they had the vulnerability. So this is the solution. There are very few other solutions. Uh, an interesting other solution is process and, and evaluate the robustness of your supplier. This is something, if you look at the world of car production, this is something that has been, the same problem was in car production, when they start to outsource some production. Then they devised the quality management system to be sure that they provide or satisfy some quality requirement. And so this should also hold for computer. And then you said that the last point is sharing of, of information on how a system has been attacked so that if the system has been attacked because it had module Z and your software bill of material tells that you are using module Z, you can use that information to improve your security, to have signatures of an attack, etc. Et this, and this will uh, affect also open source projects. Because if an open source project is to be used as an example, in the States by a federal institution, you have to check that you have the software you need to. Second problem, ransomware. I do not think I have to convince you this is an important problem. Uh, these are the percentage of industry in a given application field that has been attacked. Notice that the largest one is healthcare. Because in this case, you have little space to bargain. An hospital cannot bargain too much if its data has been encrypted by a <coughs> Well, excellent information. Italy is the best place for ransomware attacker after uh, English language speaker. So we are in the fifth place, one of the few places where we are in the top 10. I'm not sure if this is the good news. I'm wondering if our National Cyber Security Authority is aware of that. Don't know. Anyway, you see, we are in a good position and Australia is very close, so with a bit of work we can become uh, even, we can even go in fourth position. But since we are not, we are not to be admitted to the final championships, it may be with you. So, in ransomware, what is the, mo uh, from my opinion, the most interesting features of ransomware is not the technically. Technically, uh, a ransomware intrusion is rather simple. Someone penetrates your system, it happens every day, move a little, encrypt everything, and in the new version, they also exfiltrate information. So they put their liberation on this Exfiltrate the information, and we will see later a bit, because there is what is called double, triple, fourth in speed uh, extortion. Uh, so technically, it's not a big issue. It would, it would uh, a bit of network segmentation would destroy Iran somewhere, but that is too complex for our company. Uh, the most interesting point is that ransomware as a service. So it's a social problem because ransomware is not uh, something that is uh, done by an attacker or a gang. It involves the cooperation of several gangs. There is a rule system. There is the gang that produces the malware that is used to encrypt. There is a gang that offers initial access. That is, they penetrate the system, do nothing else, create maybe a fake account or something like that, and then sell that access to the market. Then there is the 
for ransomware distribution service, a gang that buy the malware from here and then sell the malware and some service. As an example, an, an, an alt desk, I'm not joking, an alt desk to help the victim to recreate their system to decrypt their information, etc. And then there are the affiliates. The affiliates, by initial access, go to the ransomware distribution and service, buy the ransomware, and use the ransomware to encrypt everything. And then they stop here, maybe, because now the ransomware distribution come into the scene and begins to do the bargaining about the amount of the ransom, help desk, etc. The last step is money laundering because someone, after a couple of years, they discovered that cryptocurrency are not anonymous. They, they claim that they are anonymous, but they are not anonymous. They are a company in California, actually, that sell this service. They can trace the payment till a money exchanger, and then the law requires the money exchanger to tell who has cash a given amount of money. So you see, there is all this bullet of service. Defeating ransomware means defeating the bullet of service, not just one actor. If you capture a gang, no problem. In the ecosystem, there will be someone that replaces it. If you remove a malware, no problem. There are other producers, etc. In some cases, there is a very interesting case where an, uh, uh, an affiliate has bought two malware and used the two malware to choose which was the best one for a given system. So, very nice. Uh, this is the situation. This is a record by the UK Cybersecurity Authority uh, appeared about two weeks ago that described uh, in some detail the, the ecosystem. There is a huge number of books that describe that. that is a resume. You see here you have uh, the, the marketplace, the initial access broker, the affiliates that buy an access here, then go to a ransomware service and uh, use uh, buy the malware to the block. And since commercial is everywhere, this is the commercial on a dark website to publish one ransomware, buy our ransomware, do not buy another ransomware. Uh, there is a huge number of uh, initial access to be sold on the dark market, on the dark market. This is the number of initial access that are sold on black market. Uh, this is another uh, thing, interesting thing. This is a polling. Lockbit is one ransomware as a service company. It has uh, several affiliates. The problem was that there was a competition between affiliates because one was asking uh, too low amount of money, etc. So they tried to establish some rule. Uh, and they ask the affiliate to choose among these rules. As an example, you see uh, minimum payment, 3% of the company annual revenue. This is more or less the amount of money a company makes in, uh, in a week. So usually since uh, ransomware can block you for a week, that is the good amount of money to, to ask. Uh, other suggest to pay the Quasca ransom, that is the cyber insurance of the victim. Other more educated suggest 50% of the maximum insurance. So they made a polling. They do a vote. I do not know who is the winner, but one of these should be the winner. One of the affiliate told that he was not interested in the polling, I will ask for 3%, otherwise 
with the story, I would think. Uh, I hope you can see something. This, is a, this shows why destroying a gang is useless, because these are the story of the gang. There is this interesting map you can download. As an example, this is a uh, gang county where it's very famous because one uh, was of the very intelligent gang because they, at the beginning of Russia invasion, they, de they declared that they will help Putin, Putin invasion. They, we will do everything we can to sustain Putin invasion. They forgot that half of the people working for the gang were Ukrainian. And let's say this guy didn't like this position, so they ran away, they changed gang. So you see that some of the people went to another gang, etc. At the end they died. But you see that there is a continuous exchange of people across gang. And this is the graph that describes all the possible exchange. So defeating one gang is not very significant because people will move to another gang, will bring their know-how, etc. So you have to work on the ecosystem. Defense, well, robustness, backup. Backup, immutable, immutable copy are sold. They are totally useless because currently they exfiltrate your information. And if you do not pay the ransom, they will publish the information on the dark website. If you are using information with uh, privacy rule, GDPR, etc., that's a nightmare. Uh, hygiene, resilience, but the real problem we have to decide is, is ransomware an act of proxy war? There are researchers that believes that Ransomware is not a criminal problem, actually, are criminal working on behalf of the states. As an example, no ransomware attack has been ever reported against a Russian-speaking country, and someone suggests the best defense against the ransomware attack is connect a Russian keyboard to your system, so they will see the Russian keyboard and they will not attack you. Uh, there are work that prove that there is a correlation between the political event in a country and the number of attacks against that country. The best idea, I believe, is to speak letter of Marque, letter of Marque, sorry, uh, those of Marque to prefer French, the letter that were given to pirates that enabled them to attack ships provided that some benefit also come back to the king or to the queen in the issue that letter of my king. So there is this relation. Uh, this is a, more or less a Microsoft report that works in this direction. Uh, this is a paper, this is the paper that relates uh, the number of attack and the political event. Uh, this is a very nice book in Italian, seldom the case. But it's a very nice book about this issue. Last problem, artificial intelligence. You cannot, anyway, you can, today you cannot do anything if you do not speak about artificial intelligence. Uh, some possible applications. Battle fishing letter in any language. So you can write a very nice and convincing letter in English and then have uh, Chat GPT translate you in any other language. Uh, another, this is a help for the attacker. Uh, a help for the defender would be static discovery of vulnerability. Uh, train your network to find vulnerability in your code. Another thing is train your network to discover attack in your system. And last, which is your support in an intrusion. Have artificial intelligence help an attacker to attack your system or if you want a defender to defend the system. A which is your support system. Uh, I'm not an expert about phishing letters, so let's keep the point. Uh, 
there are big doubts about the ability of discovering vulnerability using neural networks. Because there are the data that has been produced till now is not very available, bias, bias parameter, basic policy, etc. So it's very hard to use a neural network to discover a vulnerability, even because in several cases vulnerability depends not only on the code but also on the configuration. And so that will be a complex problem. This is a paper that describes all the doubt. Uh, another paper, another uh, decision support system. Decision support system, there are some experience, as an example, there is a paper that describes use of uh, artificial intelligence system, chat GPT, in the attack to this system. You see, this system is very, very, very trivial. You do not need a decision support system, but, but anyway, uh, this, these are some of the questions that have been asked to the to chat GPT-3 and chat GPT-4. Uh, what are the action I can, the object I can attack? Which is the best action I can execute now? Uh, you see, chat GPT-3 has not very satisfactory results. A bit more chat GPT-4. Uh, these are problems that have been discovered in this experiment. Hallucination, the decision support, the, L, uh, the chat GPT suggests something that is clearly impossible. Uh, it suggests of repeating a previous action that has already been executed. The cost is very high, are very high. Uh, and instability. A bit of change in the parameter may result in a dramatic change in the result. Uh, forgive me a self citation. This is a paper I've done with my one of my nice students, uh, nice uh, clever students. Um, we have we have investigated whether it is possible to learn how to attack a system. So we have here we use genetic algorithms, that's I tell you. And you see that it's possible to learn how to attack a system. So you can teach an artificial intelligence system how to attack a system. Which is the problem? The problem is if you wanted to use the system that you are training here to attack another system, will it work? Well, the answer is no, it doesn't work. So you have to train it again, okay? My example is you can teach an artificial intelligence to play chess, but now we have a chess, uh, we have a checkboard that change, the number of pieces that change, so transfer the learning is not so superior. Last problem, this is the AI and cybersecurity. That means, do AI systems have security problems? Yes, they have a lot of security problems. As an example, if you poison the training set, you will have a very dangerous system, and the problem is that you poison the training set and do not discover, uh, you will bring the neural network for some application, image recognition, uh, credit uh, scoring, or something like that, and you will never be able to discover that you are using a system that has been attacked. There is no code that you can examine to learn that there is a vulnerability. The vulnerability was before, and you did not discover it. So, there are this big security problem. Just a few people are wondering, are worrying about that, because as usual, security is a problem for the next version. But uh, the only one uh, framework that I have seen about securing the AI is the, this one of the Google team. Uh, and this, uh, well, this is a sentence. Uh, Many way, AI systems can be vulnerable to attack. It is essential to take steps to secure 
uh, well, the security should be regularly reviewed, etc. So from this point of view, we have nothing new in security. They should be secure, the tools they are not. Let's see what happens. That's all. Well,